This is Dr. Summer Hamoud. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with the Rothman Institute. Here we're going to uh, demonstrate the utility of the new Fiber Stitch 1.5 in a vertical longitudinal tear of the periphery of the body extending into the anterior horn of the medial meniscus. So this is the new 1.5 Fiber Stitch and I just wanted to show you guys a comparison against the 18 gauge spinal needle. Okay, so for orientation purposes, this is a left knee. We're here in the medial compartment and we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate the tear. We have already trephinated our MCL, and so we have a much better visualization here and better access. And so what we've done actually is created the body anterior horn segment of what would typically in a clinical scenario be a bucket handle tear of the medial meniscus. These typically don't present in this location in isolation clinically. We would have already repaired our posterior horn and now we're coming around towards the body and into the anterior horn, which are typically more difficult to access with all inside meniscal repair devices. So of course, initially when we're preparing to do a meniscal repair, we wanna improve the biology. And so we would typically come in with our torpedo shaver and prepare the edges. Something that I like to do is use the shaver on either forward or backward when I'm preparing with a shaver as opposed to a rasp. The benefit of this is you're not removing meniscal tissue. Instead, you're really just freshening up the tear edges. And so that's something nice to do. You can control your suction. So again, so that you're not removing tissue and you're just biologically preparing the edges and freshening them up for a repair. So we have a couple of options in terms of how to attack this. You certainly can switch your portals, place the camera in your medial portal and bring your meniscal repair devices through your lateral portal. Another option, because this is a much better view, is to keep your camera laterally and just create a more far accessory lateral portal. As you can see here, I'm coming in with the spinal needle. It allows you to do the repair and have more direct visualization of the tissue as you're puncturing it. It also allows you access to the tibial surface of the meniscal repair and better visualization if you're trying to get tibial sided sutures. So again, as we can see here, just to illustrate, now I've come in through the medial portal with my camera and I'm probing through our initial lateral portal. And so we can see our access as we're more posterior directly onto the meniscus for a nice repair is very nice. But as we come towards the more anterior segment of the tear, obviously the probe has a tip to it, a curved tip, but access with a straight device becomes definitely more difficult. We do have pretty good visualization here viewing through the medial portal, but it's not always the case. So it's nice to have options of viewing through both the medial and the lateral portals while you're doing your work. So we're going to go ahead and get our first implant in along the sled safely. I tend to like to go meniscocapsular first with my first pass only because if you go into the body of the tissue, you have some suture that would be blocking your visualization more peripherally. So we are going to go ahead and utilize the curve. We'll puncture through. You do have to be careful as you come more anteriorly. It is possible actually to exit out the skin in very thin patients. So it's something to be very mindful of. So we're gonna go ahead and deploy our first implant here. So we've gone ahead and done so. We're gonna slowly remove the device and we're gonna come to our next insertion point come through the meniscal tissue, go ahead and reduce the tear and puncture through. So we've gone ahead and done that. And so now we will remove the device. So now what you have here is the loop as well as the long suture end. You're gonna grab all of them and set your anchor on the capsule like so. So I'll go ahead and use my probe here. I'll place it in the looped portion externally here and allow me to set my first mattress suture, as you see there. And then we'll go ahead and grab the free end and set the second mattress with really nice tension there. So we'll go ahead and use our suture cutter, slide it over the free end, and go ahead and deploy that.
We're going to march more anteriorly along the tear. We are going to continue to place our femoral sided sutures because as you see, what this does is it everts the tibial side to you. And so if you wanted to place balanced vertical mattress stitches on the tibial side, it's nice to keep this aversion going because it's just much easier to place them subsequently. And we still have great visualization to continue with our femoral sided sutures. We're gonna go ahead and introduce our next implant here along the sled. Same thing, we will go ahead and puncture peripherally. Deploy the first implant, again, retract slowly. And for me, because I like to, whenever possible, get tibial sided sutures and mimic an inside out repair, my next bite in the meniscal tissue is not gonna be as far centrally. I'm gonna stay a little bit more peripherally so that I have enough meniscal tissue to work with on my tibial side in order to get implants that don't collide with one another. Go ahead and deploy the next implant here. And we're done with that. And we'll go ahead and remove the inserter. And as we've done before, we will go ahead and set the implants on the capsule. So as we come more anteriorly, we can start to see with our sled that maybe our trajectory will start to skive away from really the direction that we want and towards this more posterior stitch. But let's go ahead and put our 12 degree implant in and see how that works. This is what I usually do clinically. So again, you can see like if I puncture through the meniscal tissue here, the 12 degree helps you, but I am concerned that I'm gonna start to skive through the tissue. And so what I'm going to do is place a little bend because these implants are flexible to allow us to get a better trajectory through the tissue for a perfect vertical mattress stitch. And so this is our 12 degree implant and we wanna gain access a little bit more anteriorly on the meniscus. So what I would typically do clinically is go ahead and bend this just using my fingers. And so we can grab the tip here. We wanna do it delicately and we can just very nicely place a little bit more of a bend on that. And so as you can see, our trajectory is more to a 90 degree angle into the capsule, which is just much nicer. So we don't skive particularly through the capsule or through the tissue. So let's go ahead and place our first implant through the capsule. And then again, utilizing the curvature, angling it more anterior through the meniscus allows us to get that perfect trajectory. Set the implant, place the probe through the loop, set the first mattress stitch, and then second mattress stitch set by pulling on the free end. So here as we take a look, I'm coming in, my camera's in the lateral portal, and I'm using a spinal needle in a far accessory uh, lateral portal. Again, coming a little bit more proximally in the skin. You have to be cognizant of that because you don't want to run into your camera as well, and you want to have the appropriate trajectory here. But you see, even with a straight spinal needle, you're still a little bit skiving. So even just changing your portal position may not be enough. And so you really want to utilize that flexibility of these all inside one five fiber stitches. So here we're going to utilize our 24 degree one five fiber stitch. So we have some options with our devices here to allow us to gain access to the more difficult locations. You can see with the 24 degree we actually have really nice access and doesn't even require any bending. So let's go ahead and deploy our first implant here. And again, another nice feature of this is I can really do this while still holding the camera. So it really is a one-handed deployment method. Really nice repair on the femoral side. Go ahead and cut that suture and then we're going to address the tibial side and I want to demonstrate to you how this view through the lateral portal gives you the best view and then your accessory portal that we're coming through right now allows us just really fantastic access to the tibial side to get a perfect repair. So here we're going to utilize our reverse curved 1-5 fiber stitch implant. And so as you can see, what it allows is that bevel and the sharp tip is faced up. So it allows you to really access the meniscal tissue and puncture through it without skiving. 
I would like to mention that although on the femoral side, I typically puncture the meniscal capsular junction first. Here, I like to puncture the meniscal tissue first. And so we'll go ahead and puncture through, reduce angle away from our previous implants. And then here we will come inferior. And again, look at the visualization here while we're viewing through the lateral side. Go ahead and puncture through. You can see here how placement of the tibial sided vertical mattress stitch reduces the meniscus down anatomically. And so for me clinically, I would typically place likely a second stitch just a little bit more anterior. I typically just go as anterior as I can visualize and as the tear requires. So this is our final construct here. We have the four vertical mattress stitches on the femoral side. The two vertical mattress stitches on the tibial side brought the meniscal repair down nicely and reduced it. It mimics an inside-out repair.